if I'm dealing with activity related lateral hip pain, particularly around the glute medius and glute minimus, then there's a series of interventions and or exercises that I can use to help to assuage this pain and actually bring the uh, tendon capacity back to what I need to be able to do, running, cycling, swimming, etc. So the first is to reduce the low level irritation that you have within the hip and or the muscles. So it's really the myofascial tissue that you want to be targeting. Now this can be done through foam rolling, lacrosse ball. I prefer the percussion therapy. Uh, if you're outside of the state of California, a therapist could even dry needle in and around your hip, which can provide a lot more immediate relief. Um, it's a little bit more invasive, but shown to be quite effective. If I was gonna self-administer this, I would be lying on my side with the hip in question elevated. And so I'll, I'll demonstrate that. And before I begin, I, it's actually really important to do some self-assessment. So oftentimes, when we're having lateral hip tendinopathies or pain, there can be some limitation in our range of motion. For instance, one of the things that can be limited is our hip flexion. So if I spun to the side, I'm like, okay, let's see where I'm at. And this is really, I think, important one, so you can like, have a better idea as to what your where your body is and how much work needs to be done. It also allows for a nice pre and post test to substantiate that you're actually making meaningful change rather than just assuaging the pain. So first test would look like this, where I would bring my knee up as far as I can without like tilting my pelvis and with my opposite foot as is, without my foot rising up or my knee flexing. I'll get a gauge by looking at the top of my knee and where it hits on the wall or the ceiling in question. I bring it back down, I bring my other one up, and you can see the limitation that I have in my left side. This would be, this should go just as high as my right, but it stops short of that. Additional self-tests that I do and perform is that I often know that my hip, when it's stiff, will be limited in its abduction. What does that mean? So if I sit here like this and I drift my leg off to the side, do I get encroachment on the outside? And how far does it go relative to my other side? And I'm blocked there, but usually this leg would go further. The other self-test is you can sit in a long seated position and I'm gonna actively distract my leg as if I'm gonna push through my heel and then I'm gonna look at how much external rotation I have versus how much internal rotation I have. And you can see that, that that sucks on my internal rotation. I should have more than that. And I actually feel the tension just here. If I look at my right side, I can distract, meaning I push my heel long, I can externally rotate quite well, and I can internally rotate quite well. Again, internal rotation is still limited, but better than what is my left, which barely gets past neutral. And so these are some of the self-assessments that I perform in order to ask myself, okay, where is my hip at today and how much work needs to be done? Okay, self-assessment, step two, reducing some of the muscle tension, some of the pain around the hip girdle, prepping the tissue for said mobility and strength-based exercises that are to come. So I tend to lie on my side with the hip in question elevated or up. And then uh, for the device in question, it doesn't necessarily matter. Okay, so here's my lateral hip. You can kind of feel your bone. And I'm gonna go almost in this crescent shape around that, and then down through the front of my front pocket and into what is typically termed the IT band and the myofascial or lateral sling. And I'm gonna spend about eight, anywhere between five and eight minutes, depending on what I need. And I'm gonna hold the nozzle of the gun as I go in either small concentric circles and really put some deliberate force down through the device to help to get deeper into the tissues. And I 
not only does the evidence suggest that this gets deeper penetration and have better blood flow than does your typical foam roller, but it also substantiates with enhanced range of motion, at least in the most recent publications. Disclaimer there is you also have to look at who's uh, essentially subsidizing and or funding said studies. But anecdotally, also within my clinical practice, I have found them to have better post-test application. So oftentimes people will use these devices and they'll be a little bit more haphazard and going up and down the leg. I encourage you to be deliberate with the application, the amount of force that you're putting in, as much as you can tolerate, spending time on those areas of greatest tension. And again, not just focusing in and around the hip girdle, but also going down the limb as well because the, the fascial tissue all the way down to the knee is going to have continuity with that up at the hip. At times, I will then also go into this position where I'm getting in and around the soft tissue into the front of the hip. Then anywhere between five and 10 minutes, eight is usually kind of the sweet spot. Um, and then again, as much pressure into the device as I possibly can. Sometimes people need a family member or someone uh, else to be able to apply it, depending on your mobility and where your shoulder range of motion is at. Okay, that primes the tissue. We have a sense of where I'm at, and you can already see that my internal rotation has immediately improved compared to what it was when I started. But we've only just scratched the surface. Those results are likely just temporary. So then what I need to do is before I work on the rotation of my hip, I need to actually ensure or maximize my mobility in what is called the sagittal plane. Humans, human nature, particularly on our left hip, more so than our right, but across the board, we tend to be forward facing and forward trajectory in our, in our motion, our day to day. It's just how our central nervous system orients itself uh, to the world. And thus, we have this tendency, that in combination with our breathing mechanics, to be in this anterior pelvic tilt. Our ideal is to relatively come to more of a neutral pelvis. We don't have to be tucking our tail, walking around like this. It's really just more a relative pulling of our hip forward. The reason why this is significant for hip health is if I'm in this anterior pelvic tilt, I'm gonna have additional compression in the front and lateral side of my hip. So I need to do some type of mobility to get myself back into this neutral position. If I want to, if, depending on how your symptoms are, you could go into a kind of a stretch regimen. The classic one is in a, and I'll position myself accordingly, in a half kneeling position, I'm gonna first squeeze my glute, bring my belt buckle up, and go into that posterior pelvic tilt. I'm gonna then take my foot and bring it off to the side so I'm slightly internally rotated. Immediately I feel some tension in the front of my hip. Now by all means you could be using your massager or some type of foam roller or what have you and do your soft tissue in this stretch position. That's fine. But this exercise has three phases. Phase one, I'm just resting in this position. It's an active stretch though. I'm still got my lower abdom abdominals on. I'm still squeezing my glute. I'm slightly translating forward. And the tissues need at least a minute under the stretch position. Four seconds in, eight seconds out. Again, I can continue to do soft tissue here if I need to. Phase two is gonna be more of an active element. So I'm gonna imagine with my left leg, I'm gonna slide the mat forward I'm gonna mount myself in my right leg, and I'm gonna try and do this. I'm gonna try and do the scissoring motion with my legs. But no motion will actually occur. But this internal tension that I'm building is making meaningful changes on the front of my hip. Be sure to continue to squeeze your glute. Continue to slide those feet in opposite direction for 30 seconds as hard as you can go. 
I call it your safest, greatest contraction. You don't want to cause any discomfort in your hip, but you want to feel like I'm doing a lot of work. I'm even sweating a little bit, and I'm really starting to feel the tension in the front of my hip. Phase three, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to try and slide the blue mat back as I slide my foot forward. I'm going to do that for, again, 30 seconds. Hard, as, as much vigor as I can, but without coming out of my uh, posterior or pelvic tilt and or neutral position. As I do that, I feel good glute activation. I feel tension continuing the front of my hip. It should be a high intensity isometric exercise. Okay, so that's option one. Option two would actually be doing a strength exercise to help with this. Okay. So uh, if you want to come around this side, I think that'll give you a, a better perspective here. Uh, maybe on under the side here. So if we strength, if we add resistance to a muscle that's elongating, it actually has a more potent effect on the tissue in question and on our joint health than does just stretching alone. And so that's what I'm gonna demonstrate here. I'm gonna go into a, a stride stance. I'm gonna go into a slight posterior pelvic tilt. You can notice that my waistline and my belt is as level to the floor as I possibly can get. I'm gonna load through my back foot about 60 to 70% compared to my front. I'm then gonna drop my back knee down towards the ground over the duration of about 10 seconds. So it's going to look like this. I like to have something to hold on to because it allows me to maintain good mechanics as I load this tissue. And so it'll look like this. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10. Maintaining posterior pelvic tilt. I have a straight line between my shoulder, hip, and knee, and then I shift forward, I come up, I reset, I repeat. I would do a minimum of one set of 10, ideally work myself up to about three sets of 10. And you can consider, yes, there's strength inputs involved with this, but really it's daily maintenance of my hip mobility. Once we've gotten our anterior and posterior pelvic tilt and hip uh, so there's a little bit more flexibility in the front of our hip. We can now go into some rotational base movements because the orientation of the ball in the socket is ready for those movements. Now, I, I like this if you have access to a cable uh, machine at your gym or what have you, you got your home set up, great. Uh, you, can use, you can utilize this, but not necessary. So I'm going to show you like just the home version first and then we can go into the cables. So again, I'm going to be doing some isometric work here. I'm going to be in a side plank position, something like this. Again, left hip is the one in question. You can notice that I should have a relatively straight line from my nose down to my navel and my hip is in a relatively neutral position. So if I spun like that, you can see it there. I'm gonna tuck my tail, again, allowing for clearance in the front of the hip, and then I'm gonna do some isometrics with my rotation. I'm gonna try and go in the internal rotation of my hip. That is to say, I'm gonna try and lift my foot up like this. However, without compensation. So if I really lock myself in, posterior pelvic tilt and now try and lift my foot. So me uh, driving in the ground and lifting foot like this, it's actually very difficult for me to be able to do so. But I'm going to, despite the difficulty and despite the lack of articulation or movement that occurs at the foot, the internal forces that I'm driving with the muscle activation at my hip is going to be therapeutic and make meaningful changes over time such that I could even potentially go higher. But don't focus on the height, focus on making sure that I'm in this posterior pelvic tilt and lifting hard. I'm gonna do uh, about five rounds of 30 to 40 seconds. 
button. Lifting, 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 lifting. Again, 30 seconds. I'm giving everything that I possibly can without going into my anterior pelvic tilt and without compensating to get my foot to go higher. Simultaneously to that, I'm gonna mix it up where not only do I go internal, but I also do some external uh, range of motion or strength inputs. So what this is gonna look like, I'd be like this, right? And imagine that I'm gonna drive my foot into the ground. Use the mat there only to, so you can appreciate it, not necessary. So I'm here, knee stable, posterior pelvic tilt, left abdominal wall engaged, and I'm gonna drive my foot into the floor. Again, hard, as high of an intensity of a contraction as I can possibly get. And I really feel that in my buttock, as well as continued tension or a stretch in the front of my leg. You can see the kind of the, even the tension lines in my pants substantiating where the tension lines are within my myofascial system. And then I'm just gonna go to work, hard 30 to 45 seconds. And then once I'm fatigued, I'll rest and go back into the internal. So anywhere between three, but ideally five repetitions. So class, the next uh, example is really more of a, a strength input. So um, if I were to lift up, I'm gonna go into my hip abduction. Just doing isometrics like this has shown to be very effective at helping to uh, reduce pain and to adequately load the lateral hip muscle in question. However, this is often done improperly. First off, is the body's very creative at getting the job done uh, through compensation. The first would be that my, it, you can notice that I can like lift my pelvis and literally side bend my spine to lift my leg. So with my top hand, I'm gonna push hip down, squeeze buttock hard, and I'm gonna lift up and back without getting this kind of accordion action or side bending at my spine. Second compensation is that people often will drift their leg forward. This is simply just loading the improper tissue here. I'm really trying to elongate my leg, pelvis here, and I'm lifting up and back. I'm gonna breathe in, breathe out, like this. I can even use a small band around my knees if the, if the weight of my leg is uh, essentially too light. And I really feel it in my posterior lateral glute, like right here. And I'm gonna be holding it for 30 to 45 seconds. The height matters not. You wanna to get to your end range as far as you can, but without compensation, without really extending here and or without letting the leg drift forward. Good. Your initial phase one home interventions that I think would really help with your hip mobility and with the assuaging of pain. So if we come back to our assessment, okay? What does my hip internal rotation look like? You can see that after those inputs, my left foot is now windshield wiper in much more than what is my, uh, my right. External rotation hasn't really changed, but that is by far better. The other assessment was hip flexion. So I'm gonna exhale, the gauge comes down, I'm in a neutral position. I'm gonna bring right knee up. And I bring left knee up, and again, it's further. Last assessment, self-assessment, was the hip abduction stool out of the way and it'll look like this. Okay, feel tension through here, come back. And again, I feel more tension here, less abutment on the outside of my hip. And though it's, I think it's really important from like human psyche that we actually see progress one, not only to facilitate ongoing behavioral change of 
yes, I'll do this tomorrow because I noticed the immediate results, but also knowing time and time again that this will come back uh, to be beneficial the more times that I do it. Does it need to be ever, er, done every day? I would say five days out of seven would be adequate. And again, these are only just the starting point. We can certainly add more onto this in order to continue to work on the lateral hip uh, pathology of tendinopathy. But really what we're trying to do is bring back up the capacity and the range of motion of the, of the hip. And when I say capacity, I'm talking about like muscle force and muscle strength that can allow us to do those other activities. And then again, there's multiple phases that can be done uh, with hip routine and hip regimen and rehab. Uh, but this is uh, hopefully a good starting point, especially if you're working towards uh, a run that you have coming up, uh, be it uh, recreational or otherwise.